Welcome back to the Uncommon Man Project, guys. In today's episode, obviously, with Nick and Josh, the amazing humans that we have coaching here with us, in today's episode, I want to pick your guys' brain on how we find our vision, how we find our purpose and our values. Like, it's one thing to have the business, have a relationship, have, you know, somewhat decent health. And a lot of guys that I know I talk to, they seem to have, you know, it's not bad. Job's doing all right. It's paying the bills. Health is not too bad. You know, they're not, they don't have cancer. They're not about to die anytime soon. And their wife hasn't left them just yet. You know, maybe it's coming in the future, but it, it's all right. It's not that bad, but they end up in this space of complacency of almost feeling kind of empty and then left with that. Well, what is this it? Like, what am I doing all this this for? Like, I feel like I'm just Groundhog Day of I go to work, I come home, it's this stale, there's no excitement. And some guys get to the point of, is there more to this? You know, some guys get to the midlife crisis and they go and start smoking meats or playing golf or ride motorcycles or have an affair or whatever, whatever their flavor is. But trying to find a constructive means for their life in their mission, finding out what their values are, what they mean to them. Like, Josh, I'd love to hear your perspective on this to start with, man. Like, have what's your journey been like in finding your mission or your vision for your life and, and has it changed over time? Yeah, like in terms of change, yes, quite a bit. I would say ma- massively, in fact. I think one of the things that, I possibly made a mistake of and maybe do today as well is just like, this is my thing. This is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. And I'm like, that's cool to have. But also I'm like, times change. Things change. Like I want the possibility of options. And I think getting into that sort of mindset can be limited. Like this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. I've had that about like coaching. I love what I do, man. And I've said it many, many, many times. Like, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. And probably. But I've actually stepped back from that and been like, well, what if you don't? And for a lot of guys, they, for maybe they haven't started with a vision or maybe they've had that vision and suddenly there's so much change or they've reached their summit and they're like, well, what do I do next? And it's a deep it's both depressive and anxiety invoking because now they no longer see the future and they also look back at the past and like why can't i feel that drive where's that discipline gone where's my motivation gone all all those things and it just comes together in this absolute spiral and this is where we talk about like that crisis happening that midlife crisis of like what am i going to do with the rest of my life Mm -hmm. and i think um i think one of the things that i've been really blessed with in my life is I've had a huge array of jobs, like a huge array. Like, yeah, I went to university. I was, I was lucky. Like, I went to university. I studied education. I became a physical education mathematics teacher. Uh, why? Why did I even do that? I, I literally received a letter from university saying, hey, you've, uh, you've got an opportunity to be interviewed at Teachers College. And I was like, I never applied for Teachers College. Never, never even applied for it. My mum applied for me to go to Teachers College. Classic. I was like, what and so these guys from my application obviously mum must have written a pretty good one back in the day so i went down i had this interview at teachers college one of my first interviews like you've had job interviews by the time you're that age but you know you're you're 15 16 17 the job interviews like hey mate i used to shine shoes for a living and dry hiking boots like it doesn't take much of an interview you know or you mowed lawns or did garments whatever it was or wash dishes so i went down to this interview i had the interview And at the end, to this day, it is the best interview I've ever done in my life. I can't even remember what I said in it, but I just remember it being so spot on. The guy chased me out to the car, the head of the department, chased me out to the car. I'm like hopping the car, going to cruise home. And he's like, look, look, Josh, I just, I just want to let you know that, that you, you, you can have a spot here. We'd love to have you. And I was like, ah, my mum sees something in me about this teaching thing. This guy sees, sees something in me, this teaching thing. Hell, I'm going to go be a teacher. I'm going to go become a teacher. And that was the start of like my first 
journey into mentoring, education, and all these things. And I went down the path, did the study, all that sort of stuff. Got into teaching, loved it. I can thought it was the thing I was going to do forever. I'm like, this is it. It was not a day. I think there was one day in my teaching career where I was like, I don't want to go to work today. So fuck that, I don't want to go to work today. I ended up being a maths teacher, by the way. I didn't even get to do the PE. I'm just a math teacher. Full box classroom. The one thing, this is the skill that I reckon I have developed time and time again. It's something that I've worked on. I looked into the details of the job that I was doing and I was like, what do I actually love about this job? What is the part that lights me up every day? This is where I think people miss the thing. They miss the boat on this because this is what aligns with your values. What I found is that, especially in mathematics, you've got one answer, right? It's the beautiful thing. You've got one answer. But there's a million different ways to get to that answer in terms of the understanding of how to do something. And it's like a puzzle piece, man. You know, you guys see it when you're coaching. You just suddenly you you do it in a way that this kid who's been battling all day suddenly just goes click and he just lights up. This is maths we're talking about. Like, this isn't fucking like you're going to save your relationship or make a million dollars. This is maths. You know, and this kid just goes, I've got it. I totally get this, sir. Like, I understand it. And you, like, it gives me goosebumps now. It's so exciting. It's thrilling. Watching somebody light up is like epic. And I was like, that was one of my first understandings of one of my values and one of the things that I wanted to do in life. And that is something I can say with my hand on my heart that I will do forever. Like, that'll be part of it because that is the one thing that has led me through every single one of my jobs. You've got a question. I feel like it's sitting on the edge of your tongue. <laughs> There's a few things that I wanted to, to dig into in in that space, man, because with that, that, that journey, how did you know that that was going to be right for you? Like it, naturally there's a lot of guys that we, we speak to, a lot of guys that are following, chasing a summit that is not theirs, that they haven't set because of their their wife has said it or their like society has said that you should be chasing this kind of job this kind of income this kind of life you know the the white pig at two and a half kids and like 100k salary all that kind of stuff but if it's not something that is inbuilt into to them like what was there for you that enabled you to either trust these people's opinion or to kind of go with that and you know, obviously, it kind of kind of worked out because you actually loved it, took a lot from it. But like, how do you see that that difference? Uh, this, I reckon, is one of the key things because I reckon it's so strong. Because I'm not against somebody else telling you, "Hey, you've got a strength in this. I reckon you should pursue it and go give this a nudge." The problem occurs is when that person, say, in my case, my mum told me to go become a teacher and then I hang on that idea and I say, well, if I don't become a teacher, if I'm not a good teacher, then I let this person down and I run my life on that. So my value is wrapped up in what this lady, what my mother thinks of me for my life. Mm -hmm. That is the biggest thing. So, and look, I, this is funny. It's come up this week. I have two look, juggernaut clients, juggernauts in their own right. One guy, Jared, Jared Singleton, absolute savage. He, will double his business in the next six months. We had a conversation, I think, just today or yesterday, and he's like, I've got this thing that I'm not doing that I know I should be doing in order to get to the next step, but it's frustrating and it's really annoying and I feel ill-disciplined with it. Like, I just can't get motivated and I just keep pushing it down the calendar further and further and further. And I was like, okay, cool. How clear are you on your vision? And he just goes, oh, fuck. I know I want to grow my business, but I'm not it's kind of murky. I don't know quite where I'm going. And I'm like, cool. And I explained this at one of our events. I'm like, have you ever gone hiking? And hiking, you start in foothills, right? You're meandering around. It's not necessarily hard. You're kind of cruising. Like you get up, uh, lose a bit of air here and there. And somewhere in the distance, you know is the end destination somewhere. You can't see it. Sometimes there's a mountain in the cloud. Somewhere it's just a destination. The thing is, is that so many guys with the anxiety, with the depression, with the vortex downwards, don't start. They're so worried about getting super clear on the vision and pulling the biggest levers. Like, I want to pull this really big lever so I can get the maximum results. I'm like, you don't even know what levers are. You don't know if there are levers. 
I was like, you've got to start to see if there are levers. And what I what I taught them through is like, once you start going up the foothills and you start getting closer, it, your summit gets clearer. The next challenge is, if you've seen foothills compared to climbing a mountain, it gets super fucking steep and it gets way harder. It's way harder. You've got to start hiring staff in a business. You've got to start scaling your systems. You've got all this extra work to do and it gets harder and harder. However, the summit's now clearer. So your discipline goes up, your motivation goes up. You don't need to. You don't need alarm for work anymore. You just get up. You don't need alarm to, or a thing to go to the gym anymore. You just go do it because it's so clear now, and it's, you've got that laser focus to get there. I've got another juggernaut guy, Adrian. You know, and he has got to a point in his business now where he has that laser focus, and now that he's started, and he's actually doing the actions and he's executing like an absolute mofo everything's becoming clearer and because of that execution everything is moving up like an absolute warp speed he's going to replace his income in six months this guy's flying and uh, it's just like wow there you go but he's passionate he's excited he knows where he's going and i'm like there you go there's there's vision for you the thing is when you walk in the foothills and this goes for all men to start the only thing you really need you need a couple of things. One, where the hell are you starting from? Like, if you're trying to lose weight, are you fat and overweight at the moment? Okay, cool. Start with that knowledge because then you know where to start. It's like, well, don't start by running a marathon. That's not a good idea. Start by maybe changing some dietary things. Okay. Uh, you know, are you looking at investing? Okay, cool. You've got, you don't have $10,000 to invest. What, you got a dollar? Okay, at least you know that. You know where to start. The next, the really next important piece is what are your values? Because if your values align with doing sex slavery and you're starting there, but if your values don't and you're trying to do that, then you're way off and you're walking in the complete wrong foothills. But like I said, I found one of my values, right? I found one of the things that I really loved and that was watching somebody else and being part of their journey of watching them click and seeing that absolute moment of clarity when they know exactly what they need to do in order to get closer to what they want. I was like, right, that's going to be part of my life for the rest of my life. And I knew that then. I quit teaching after eight years, on and off. I went trailing for like 10 years. And then a whole lot of other things happened. I think that's really awesome. Like it, it just to the way that I see that, because I think one of the reasons people, we put so much stress on ourselves to find this, this, this vision as to like, this is, this has got to be it. Like I've got to pick something, you know, like when you leave school, I've got to pick something and it's got to be it. So I better make it fucking good. It's got to be big. It's got to be all these kind of things. And we put this pressure on ourselves. It causes the stress, the anxiety, and it's almost like our need for certainty, right? We want to have this, this certainty, but what I took from what you just said, like the analogy that comes into my mind is, well, I want to have certainty that I'm going to eat tonight. So certainty that there's going to be food, but I don't want to eat the same meal for the rest of my life. So I want to have some variety, but I want to know that there's food there. And so from your journey, okay, for that first leg, okay, I took you took that you really like helping people. I like seeing people grow, see people develop, and it just like click with them. Okay, the teaching thing isn't forever, but the helping people in that component is something. So I can take that, onto the next journey. How can I, you know, embellish that a little bit more? And something that I think I, I want to emphasize what you said about, you know, climbing that mountain in those fo- footholds, right? I had a conversation with a guy this morning who had this decision. He's like, do I take this job? What am I looking at? I'm not really sure. You know, there's this one option that, you know, is 20K more than I'm currently making. And I feel guilty for not jumping on that for my family. And I said, that's an interesting perspective man and then so one of the reasons i asked you that question about you know if it was looking back at all is when you're climbing a mountain looking down doesn't often help you unless you're falling down the mountain looking back down is a sure way to end up going that way so you're looking up you're looking where you're going and so when you take the guidance from a teacher from your mum from from someone that you value in your life taking on their their feedback and then whatever decision you make owning that and moving forward i think where a lot of guys kind of get stuck is they attack they carry with them the other person's perspective and then so when things don't work out there's someone to blame 
you told me to do this. This is your fault that I'm in this. I shouldn't have listened to you and build that resentment, whether it's a mum or a partner or a friend, brother, whoever it is, and they haven't owned the decision. So taking on that, that, uh, that feedback of like, cool, I think you'd be really good at this, man. Explore it if you want to, but I think you'd be really good at it. And then if you pursue it, okay, it's my decision to pursue this and I'm looking forward, not half foot out the back door of if this doesn't work out, I can blame him and go back to my comfort zone. Mate, this brings up the perfect example of like coaching and the guys who do really well and the guys who fall off the bandwagon. And it's when they come in and they look for that one thing, they come to you and like, cool, give, tell me what to do. I'm like, oh, shit, sorry, bro. I don't know who told you, but I ain't here to tell you what to do. I will help you find all these elements about yourself so you can make the clearest and most optimized decision that you can. Does that mean you could still fuck up and it could be the wrong thing? Yeah. But it's normally never the wrong thing because what will happen is you've taken action, which you probably haven't taken a lot of in your life if you were suffering with depression and anxiety. It's one of the things that cause men so many issues, just lack of taking action. And then I'm like, cool, you've taken action. What have you learned, bro? Oh, so you've developed a whole new skill set. Cool. So was it a terrible decision? Probably not. Like you're taking that on now. You, so many look at how many entrepreneurs, you know, leave their job and leave everything behind on a on a whim and they fucking screw up business for the next five to six, ten years, and then suddenly boom, they have a breakthrough. I'm like, I mean, you wouldn't have had that breakthrough if you hadn't learned all those things. So yeah, it's such a I think it's such a trap when people want to go to anyone, coach, mentor, and they go, please save me. Tell me what I should do here. Yeah. Nick, I'm I'm really yeah. excited to hear Nick's the yeah. ideas on on this too. Yeah. Nicholas, what's your journey in vision journey and perspective on vision, finding it, and where you're at in that space at the moment, mate? You know, I I it's so funny. I had this conversation with my partner, you know, earlier this week. And one of the things that I, I didn't have as a, as a kid was just this uh, idea of what I wanted to be. And it ties very much into what, you know, Josh is saying. So, I mean, we obviously have to draw upon this lived experience and see where we fit and what aligns with us and what feels good and what, where, where, where is there this, this life that wants to be expressed through us with whatever we do. And funny enough, I went to university as well and found myself studying something that I didn't really want to study, but I didn't know what else to do. And it was based on other people's opinions. And as much as we could say from one side, like it's great to have feedback and it's great to have someone that says, hey, like, this is a good idea. I see you've got potential. Yeah, even the market looks really good. It's right. This is a great career choice for you. When you take it personally and you pigeon yourself, pigeonhole yourself in that, then you're fucked. Because now you've, you're basically saying, I'm Nick. I'm a fucking construction worker. And that's all that I'm going to do for the next 40 years. This is what I can expect as a salary. This is what my day-to-day -day life is going to look like. And all that I need to add in is the kids, the white picket fence, and an investment, and then a retirement plan when I get to 55. And that's it. There's life. Done and dusted. You can put a bow on it. Sorted. And I think it was at the end when I was just about to get my degree that I realized that, oh, fuck. Like, I really don't enjoy this. This, this is not me. But I'm in it now. I also then found out that I was going to be a dad and it was then that whole thing of responsibility. So now you've got this mechanism where you're stuck in a position. You also have to take accountability and responsibility for other actions of your life. And you're not very clear on your values. And I'd even say the principles and more importantly, this vision that I had for my life at that time, because I know I didn't have a vision, but I didn't envision having a kid whilst I'm busy trying to complete a degree. And then I was going to do another year on top of that to better my, my certification. And 
I think with with that, you know, fast forwarding a couple of years, being in the industry and looking at all of that, very much like what I think we're on the same page here with, by just exposing oneself to all these different elements of like, okay, well, I'm busy doing construction work and I'm managing projects. And I'm also doing things that I wasn't even skilled for at that time, like welding and managing welding teams and climbing up and down turbines and all this interesting stuff that I was like, wow, you didn't, you did not get this out of a book. This is nothing that I would have you know, expected. Um, I built businesses. I built businesses and failed. I had my, my first business that I created, the, the company's name was Earth Kai, Earth Warrior. Because in my mind, I was like, I'm looking at this construction project and there's so many fossil fuels being created from this. I need to save the planet. So that was that that became my vision. That, and and this is the, this was like a stepping stone. It was like, okay, I'm gonna come up with this. I did a logo and everything, and I was like, now what the fuck do I do? Like you said, you take an action, you take a step, and then it, that evolved into something else and into something else. Obviously that failed dismally because I wanted to have, I ended up wanting to create a, a, a smoothie bar from that. And I, I looked at the, the capital costs and then how long you have to float everything and all the things you have to register and like you need the organic certification. I was like, holy shit, I need like essentially like hundred thousand dollars to get this thing running and to keep it running for, you know, six months sustainably with, personnel and rent etc etc i was like i don't have access to that i don't even know how to like raise venture capital then i was like oh that's something i don't know what to do so i I don't necessarily understand that so i started getting into forex i started understanding markets i started looking at macro and microeconomics and every single decision and step that i took i saw those gaps in my skill set but still i didn't necessarily have a defined set of values and principles but then I started doing more inner work and self-reflection and values turned into principles because I started looking for things that were true to me from my younger days to where I am today. And there were certain things that were, but certain things that had changed as well. And I think when someone says my value is, let's say, authenticity, fantastic, fantastic. But what we also forget to say at the end of that is that could also change in order of priority as you begin to change because your lived experience is going to change how you perceive yourself and the life that you're living. Your values are going to change. It might not change every year, but it's important to reflect on that. But the order of priority can change because I went from authenticity and being super principled and honoring my word to my first value when the shit was hitting the fan in like my business and my life and my relationship was safety, survival. Those took precedent. It was like money. Like that was a value which tied directly into safety. And like you said, oh, like, you know, having food on the table. Yes, it was about literally having food on the table. I didn't give a shit what food it was. Just having food on the table. That was a priority. And then that obviously shifts as things begin to shift again. And I think when we are venturing on the summit, it's like this this imagery that I use with a lot of my clients, especially on the first couple of calls, like, mate, there's going to be storms, there's going to be wind, there's going to be like, there's going to be hail, there's going to be crevasses that you are going to fall into. You are going to be looking down at some points and questioning, what the fuck am I doing? I don't even see a foundation to land on. But there's there's something, there's like this burning desire that I'd even say it's beyond this idea of a value or even a passion. It is like a a soulful will that's being expressed through you because you were in a position where you made a decision to take an action that you cannot express. Like there's no words for it, but you get up and you take a step. You get up and you take another step. And I think if... If a person is in that position where they're able to dig that deep and there's, it's like an itch you cannot scratch, that you, are, that you are unwavering in your will to create change, you might not be able to fixate on a specific outcome, but you know that there is something better available to you. 
and there's more to your experience than what it is right now, then that's a great fucking place to start. Hundred percent, and I think when part of that experience, or I dare say, the most important, in my perspective, the most important part of that experience is not what you achieve in as this vision or as part of the journey, but it's who you become that is that deserves that or that earns those things, mm-hmm. right? And then, so if your vision is to have all these things, well, what is what are the traits of a person that is capable of? like manifesting those things, earning those things, deserving those things. And if you're not that already, are you willing to go through the tests and the lessons to earn that? You know, if you're not confident, are you willing to be awkward and uncomfortable in situations doing big deals or having those conversations and going through that? Exactly that. And I think it also ties into why we put so much focus on the nervous system, because if you are not regulated, what you've just said there is impossible. I don't care how good any of us are as a coach. You cannot help someone if they are not regulated and if they are unable to regulate their system, because it's going to just go over their head. Cause like, I couldn't give a shit, mate. Like, I'm in fight or flight the whole time. I don't even hear you. Yeah. You can't I'm, fight biology. I'm, They're just like, no, <laughs> I'm out. No. And and that's why it's like we, we came up with these, you know, different processes and things around like the pyramid of performance. That's the foundation of this. Once you've got that, then the mind is a lot more, you know, maneuverable. You can you can play with it, pliable. You can chop and change and bring things in. You have actual energetic emotional and physical capacity for change then neuroplasticity becomes a thing but it it starts with that it really does start with that and then when you have that those tests aren't so scary they're definitely challenging but you're like okay this is what i signed up for this is what i said i wanted and whether it's in business or personal life whatever it is the person that that goes through those hardships, that fails, that learns those lessons in the long run is way better off. Like in when I was in kitchens, the chefs that I respected the most weren't the ones that could just execute the same dish flawlessly, follow a recipe and do it, you know, a hundred times over without batting an eye with you know their eyes closed. It was the chefs that knew how to fix the hollandaise that split because the apprentice was an idiot. It was the chef that knew how to bring a dish back because it was fucked up and he could turn it into gold, replate it and, and you know, make it restaurant worthy that could fix the things that messed up because he had made the mistakes himself and he knew how to fix them. He knew what went wrong and what to do about it. And so when you learn those lessons from making the mistake, getting yourself out of the mud and fixing it, how much more confident do you feel in your own ability to go further? Because You've been through that hard stuff. You've pulled yourself out. You've fixed things that haven't gone to plan or that have come up that you haven't ever seen rather than just having a cruisy coast like, oh, as soon as it goes wrong, I don't know what to do. I don't know how we got here. What do we do about it? And then freak the fuck out. And like, I am. Sorry, sorry, keep going, Uh, bro. No, you're going. I've got, I kind of think of of the questions guys ask when they're getting to a, to a place of the, I don't know what I'm doing, what is my purpose, all the, all these things, and I, how do I even find mm-hmm. out my values? There's two questions I kind of want to ask. What do you guys think about the whole idea of follow your passion and you'll find your work and your purpose and you'll, all this sort of stuff? I, I'm really interested in your guys' opinion about that because I have my own opinion, but I'm interested in uh, he- hearing what your guys are. You want to go first, Nick? Yeah, yeah. I think I think it. It's a it's a loaded question because if if you are just going to focus on a passion, you could maybe be like, oh, I love building Lego. You can start, you can build a whole business out of that. I'm so passionate about Lego. I think that you become clearer on your passion, which is a doing thing, when you do more things and expose yourself to more things. And it's not necessarily the thing itself that you're doing, it's the emotional response. And that's coming from what you are doing. You feel that there's, there's, it's, it's, it's basically a transference of your genius and your life force into something that you are busy with. 
on a day-to-day but, basis. Yeah. Do you think people should then take that and create a business or job about it? From a realistic perspective, if you're running a mortgage, if you've got a couple of responsibilities, don't just quit everything and dive straight into it. Be logical. But if if you're in a position where you you can be in any position, but if you are, are willing to look at yourself and say, look, this is something that actually feels like it adds life to me and I'm willing to figure out how I can take this and create value for it in some way, shape or form for myself and share that value with other people. Why not? Because normally when you're doing something from a passion, you're not looking at monetizing it. That's not the first thing that you do. You just do it. The most yeah. successful people just do it. And then eventually they're like, oh, let me put this within a business framework so I can actually make this my life. And then I'm basically not working for a living. So start off with just enjoying yourself and giving yourself like free play, like you would do for kids. And from that, then if it feels like something that you want to turn into a business, sure. But you also don't have to. It could just be something that you do. Like, I think that the problem is we feel like we have to take our passion and it must become a business. Why can't you just do your shit, make your money, but then you can still do that. Like there's so many guys that just fish and ride their boats and write poetry on the side, but they're not monetizing it. It is just what they love to enjoy with themselves. That's how they express themselves. So like, I, I don't see like you have to, or you should feel forced to. Does it make it easier? Yes. But could it maybe also taint whatever you're expressing? That's a question you need to be willing to ask yourself. And obviously the pros and cons of that, depending on who you are as an individual. Yeah. Okay. Has what are you? Reckon? My opinion on that has definitely changed uh, in having primal energies, right? And, at the start, or not at the start, but you know, at, at one point, I was very much, you know, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. <laughs> that shit, right? And that's that's great. But what are you wanting to get out of this passion, out of this passion project or whatever you're doing? As, as Nick said, if you still need to pay the mortgage, if you've still got bills to pay, then that adds a little bit of stress to it. And so just because you're good at something, doesn't mean you're good at business. Just because you're good at your trade or you're good at this thing, you know, I'm, I found this out just because I like growing mushrooms doesn't mean I have the right to make a business out of it because I don't know shit about this. I figured a lot of stuff out. But if you have to do that to make ends meet, then comes a whole lot of stress. Maybe you find out you don't love it so much or the shit that you have to do to make it a viable business massively outweighs the stuff that you actually enjoy doing and now you're stuck doing all this admin stuff that and business stuff that you don't even like doing just to do what you'd loved 10 percent of the time and now you no longer love it anymore because of you're drowning in this work and stress and debt and so i don't think that is a viable move for everybody but if you're in a position where you're financially stable you've either got investments or you've got a business that can run that doesn't take up all of your time and you've got capacity then for sure, but depends what you want out of it. Like Liv and I have a bunch of ideas that I want that we would like to do at some point in life because we can. Like I, as long as it's not losing me money, I don't care. Like it can be absolute zero at the end of the P and L, and I'm good, right? Because we plan to have everything else covered from the other spaces, and I think that in itself brings a completely different energy to what you're doing. Because you don't have this need, you don't have this scarcity, you don't you don't even have really an expectation of return. It's like I'm doing this because I want to. Man. I'm here because I want to be here, not because I've got bills to pay, mm. not because of anything else. And then, in in that space, I think is where you find your real passion. If you don't need a return on it, the return is doing the thing. Right? Yeah, yeah. Have you, have you guys heard about the the story about the fisherman, Mexican fisherman? And the and the American guy, no, oh, it's it's a classic one. So there's this fisherman down in Mexico every day, just to go out, fish, 
does what he loves, really enjoys it, goes home, does this thing with his family. It's, it's, it's beautiful. Does a bit of work, goes back to it, catches the fish, sells what fish he needs, takes the rest for the family. Boom. American guy turns up and goes, mate, you've got an amazing recipe here for, for a business. He's like, how so? Well, tell you what. So if we increase the amount of hours you work, what we can do is we can bring in three times the amount of fish and we can sell more fish to bring in more income and therefore the system's scalable and we take that profit and we buy another boat. And then with that boat, we repeat the same thing, but because of efficiency of scale, we can then do it again and do it much faster till you have an entire fleet. And then, you know, then you've got all these fleets going, you've bringing all this fishing selling and you're making all this profit and everything like this. And it goes, oh yeah, okay, cool. To what end? Like, what, with all this, what can I then do? He's like, well, then you can spend more time fishing and more time hanging out with your family. He said, well, like I do exactly now. It's just this like this this roundabout idea of do it, you're already doing something that you're passionate about, you're loving it, life's really good. And it's like, I've got to monetize it, I've got to scale, I've got to do all these things. I'm like, why? Why complicate it? Yeah. It's it's that, but it's 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 like the entire system is trying to teach you that your life isn't good enough unless yeah, unless you have a fucking Fortune 500 company, you drive a a fleet of Lamborghinis, or whatever the case. No hating on people like that because I know you wired up differently. But point being, like, you don't have to do any of that to live a satisfying, passion-filled life. Someone's passion could be being a dad. I love it. I never thought I would, but I genuinely do. Like, I can't even imagine my life not having kids. And 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 it's and it's just the thing of like, there's nothing wrong. Like, what what is what is wrong with the idea of just loving the idea of being alive? What if your passion is just life, just waking up the next day? and expressing yourself and doing the best with whatever you're doing and just dancing with whatever gets thrown on your plate. And you're like, oh, we, we've got this, we've got this, I can deal with this, I've got this. You have your responsibility, you have your accountability, you have all the things, the tools, but you're just enjoying the process. Because technically, even when you say like we have a specific outcome, all it is, is just a little milestone on this infinite timeline of experiences that you have. That's it. Like, yes, I've done it, a million dollar business. I want to scale that to five million. But in between that, you've got other things. Ten million, sure. Oh, retire, sure. That's going to happen, ideally. But as you hit those milestones, how long does that satisfaction last before you're like, what's the next thing? <laughs> Move the goalpost another twenty miles. Yeah, but there's not, there's nothing wrong with that. But the problem is, people have fallen in love with the outcome, and not the process. You've fallen, like, that's where you're living. That's where 95% of it, like, it, it, I've sat with this for such a long time because I used to be one of these miserable fucks that used to only be happy when I got the outcome and achieved that. Then, yes, I'm successful. I'm the shit. Got the dopamine, serotonin kick. Like, hell yes, the grind was worth it. Beating myself with a stick, all the belittling comments, the inner critic, all that shit. But... It's the growth. It's not just the growth. It's the journey. It's not just the journey. It's the fact that it's that in-between space where you're having to like somehow like find placement for your foot in that uncertainty. That's where you're living. It's like my kid is throwing a temper tantrum. Okay, you're running through all these options. The objective in that moment is how do I calm this little human being down? You can step into like a like a minefield and you're probably going to go off like a limb or two, like I did this morning. I had no idea why my five-year-old was burning down the house, but he was. And I was like, holy shit. Like, what did I do? And he was just upset because his brother was really happy and he thought his brother was you know, patronizing and like teasing him and making like funny noises. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to. I'm going to put a step here. Oh, I fucked that up. I said something wrong. I just should have let you like, uh, to go. 
I stepped in and I just stepped back and I was like, okay, cool. Like, and you're there in that uncertainty and you're dancing with this. That there is just as important as you scaling your business. It's it's the same thing. It's just in a like it's in a in a smaller moment, or a, there's there's less moments in that in that milestone that leads up to that outcome. But it's that what you that's the that's the living part. And at some point in time, some person shared this idea that happiness, success, and fulfillment only happens when you are on top of the mountain. So there was this simple change in words. People are like, I work, I work hard. It's like, man, if I'm going to choose something, I'm going to work joyfully, man. That's how I'm going to do it. And I was just like, simple change of words, a tiny little shift in frame, boom, change the game. I'm like, sweet. So I just, when I find like I'm on the grind, or I find like I'm working hard, I'm like, no, 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 I'm doing something wrong here. I'm not working joyfully. And that was but the change. It's been instilled in us that if you're not working hard, if you're not grinding, then you're not working hard enough and you're not going to succeed And because that's what it takes. You need to basically burn yourself out and um, otherwise you're not working hard enough. Otherwise, you're not doing it right. If it's easy, then everyone would do it, right? I once was working with a guy who was running a pretty successful business and, you know, same goal as most guys, wanted to be able to step back, less stress, more time with the family, more presence, all that kind of stuff. And was was in a position where... He he quite he could have, but like he could have taken a day off, spent it with the family, business would have run on its own and all these kind of things. We got to a point where he had subconsciously associated hard work and success with that level of stress. So if he wasn't stressed out of his eyeballs, then the business was going to burn down. He wasn't a success. He wasn't going to make any money. So as soon as he started to feel calm, He's like, something's wrong. I, I got to go do something. I got to go pull some levers. I got to go make shit happen. And would stress himself out again. And we'd be like, I know, okay, I'm stressed, but things are moving again. And then that was how we operated because that's what he had conditioned himself to in order to achieve that level of success, which is wild. So, yeah. Joe, on that last one, how would you suggest to someone that has it been? conditioned like we all have to you need to work hard you need to grind in that space How, what advice question tool could you give someone to shift that perspective to working joyfully rather than torture so uh, for the first time the other day a guy shared with me uh, um, i was traveling down to the coast to coast and I, put, I was picking up some fruit in New Zealand. We, we just have little fruit stalls on the side of the road. They trust you're going to pay for them and you take the fruit and off you go, right? Not like the rest of the world. We're different here. So uh, I, I'm there and I'm about to grab this this fruit and pay for it. And this guy comes over and he, he starts chatting. I ask him how the season's going. And he's like, what do you, what do, you do? What, you, you just work a couple of hours a week and then that's it? Man, I'm over here working 50, 60 hours a week. And it is the very first time in my life I have not just first jumped to it and tried to like compete. Oh, fucking, I used to work. All right. I'm like, you know what, bro? I just went, yeah, man. Now the goal is to like work as little as humanly possible with making the most impact while I do it and doing it with the most joy at the same time. And he just kind of was like, shit. I was, I was like, yeah, be honest with yourself. Cause if you were working 20 hours a week, like, is that what you want? You know, and it was just this interesting thing. And how I got there, and that it goes back to when we talked about vision and values. I was like, values, what are they for you? And this, I think, is one of the most, comp I think people try and make this more complicated than it is because they want, they want this big, grandiose thing to come from values. They want to like, cool, now that I know my values, I'll, I'll always wake up at 5 a.m., I'll always be driven, I'll just feel motivated every second of the day and life's going to be just this beautiful path forward. And I'm like, it's not so much like that. And finding your values isn't about just doing an assessment online. They're helpful. They bring a level of awareness up. But actually finding your values allows you to then be the kind of guy like, if I value peace and time and family, but yet on the other side, I'm working eight hours a week, stressed out of my mind, doing bags of cocaine, like all this other stuff. I'm like, there's a misalignment in your life. Like your values can actually be family and time, but unconsciously you're running this life. So you need to start 
using your values to pull back decisions that get you closer to alignment. And for those guys that are going, well, how do I find out my values? If you don't know what they are, start looking at values in other people that you hate, like things that you do not like, and start picking the opposite of those and just practicing instilling those in your own lives. And you'll find that life will come down and like Nick said, they can change in different stage in life. Sometimes you want safety and security and that's the highest value in your life and you'll do anything to get there, anything to protect your family. Those sorts of things, so your values might change. But you'll find that you'll have probably four or five values that will just change in order of priority as you go through life. And once you've got those, you go and make decisions based on that. I have this rule now where I'm like, if it's stressful, like if I'm trying really hard and the answer is not coming, I'm doing the wrong thing every time. And as soon as I let go of that, a better option always comes up. I'm like, that feels easy. I'm going to go do that and every time. So that's one of my things that I do. But that has only come from really understanding values because then I can go, I'm going to make this, I'm making this, trying to make this decision. And then usually if it feels slightly off, I just go and check with my value list. And I'm like, does it align with those? Oh, this one's off. That's why it doesn't, it feels slightly disconnected. And that's very hard to do when you're this far away from your alignment. But as you get closer, it becomes easier because you're more aware. And as you get here, and when you get here, you are in the river. You are just cruising. Every decision's easy. Life flows. You're like, wow. When it gets hard again, I know I've moved away from that alignment. I've gone somewhere else. I'm checking with my values again. Maybe look back at my decisions. How did I get here? What was my decision-making process? Boom. Done. Work joyfully, baby. And that's where I get to. I think that takes a very high level of intuition and mm. experience to get to that point. Because as as humans, we naturally want to gravitate to the path of least resistance, right? But if we're already in the comfort zone, which has created the life that we're in, where yeah. we're fat, poor, overweight, and in a relationship that we're not entirely happy with, then going to that easy route isn't always the best. So I'm glad you clarified that on does it align with my values in making that decision? Because sometimes to get out of that comfort place, that complacency, it's going to have to be hard. Like change is, is always hard, but if it's less hard than staying the same, right. And does it progress you to that? I heard a really good test on, on values because obviously, you know, when you do those tests online, it's super easy to say, well, I would like to value these things, but <laughs> our actions are completely misaligned. And I can't remember where I heard this, but the, the person said that your values are things that you prioritize even when it's detrimental to you. So, That's a tough one. so the things that you prioritize, so you saying no to overtime that's going to get you $500 an hour because you've got your nephew's first birthday. Sorry, bro, you can't put a price on that. I'm going to be there. Sorry, man, I can't make this because I've got, I've got me time. I've got my, my health is more important. I'm going to the gym. I'm doing whatever else it is. Even if it's going to cost you X amount of dollars, you're going to lose something potentially on it. But what you value is much higher. So, I mean, that goes for something simple like dessert. I really want this to do it. I know it tastes good, but I'm like, my my value is health. My value is losing weight. My value is getting shredded, whatever. You're like, that's, it's kind of the dessert is you're giving that up, even though it's detrimental to you having a better time, maybe. Does that work the same? Yeah. Well, uh, what, what you play, like how far you want to play it out. Because if you're like, okay, it's dessert. Well, I know it's going to taste good. And so if I'm thinking in the next five minutes, then, okay, there's not really any downsides to that. But then if you play it out a little bit longer, like where my head goes with dessert, well, okay, most desserts, there's a bunch of sugar in it. So that's going to fuck my sleep up. And then if I've got trash sleep, how am I going to feel tomorrow? Well, I'm probably not going to perform too well in the gym. I'm probably going to have brain fog when I rock, rock up to calls. And then I'm going to eat more calories, which means if I keep doing this every night, then eventually I'm going to put on weight and I'm not going to have a body that I'm happy with. And then my confidence is going to go down. And then I'm not going to show up to calls or to my relationship or as a dad, as the confident man that I want to be. And if I'm not valuing health in that level of consistency and have that level of discipline, which discipline is and congruency are two of my highest values, then I'm now incongruent, not only in my devaluing health, but then I've kind of played all that out. And it's like, it's a dessert, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Some people are going to be like, dude, it's a fucking fondant. Just eat it. Right. <laughs> but I'm like, no, like to give you context on that. When I was, was a chef, 
the owner of the restaurant offered me fifty dollars to eat a Krispy Kreme donut. I told him to get fucked. I've heard this story. It's no I said good. no. I'm like, I'm not eating it. Like, it's not worth it to me. Like, so despite the taste of the donut, the 50 bucks extra in, in my pocket, as an apprentice, 50 bucks, that's half a day's pay. Like, you know, not bad to eat a donut. And, but he couldn't waver me on my values. So that's, that's, that's why you're that's, Adonis. That's why you're the Adonis, mate. That's, that's the answer right there. But like you order those and naturally that brings your own confidence up because you know who you are for what you want to be, not because someone else is trying to influence you. They were going to test you with, come on, man, have this dessert. It's so freaking good. It's the best in the city. It's all these kind of things. I'll even pay you to eat it, have all this kind of stuff. And then so you have to see eventually where your line in this, where your boundaries is and what you actually value. Dude, I think you have just uncovered one of the biggest things, and it, this is not the time for it today, but the biggest things in terms of male confidence. So you have just put, lifted up the rock and given a glint, and we'll have to go into it for, for some lads. Like how, how do you go about utilizing, leveraging things like values to just take your confidence through the roof? Because that's so important. A, a simple word for, for me that that covers all of that is congruency. Yep. If you don't value health, if you are happy being fat and earning, you know, your minimum wage or whatever you're on and you're, you're totally content and happy with that, be happy with it. Don't tell yourself that, oh, I'm going to start the gym on Monday or I'm going to do this, I need to do this and put that pressure on yourself. If it's not a value of yours, don't do it. Right? You'll be much happier if you're congruent with what you actually want and what you actually value. So why not go with that? Yeah. You know, like with what you're saying there, essentially, if you look at values, they govern your behavior as a whole. And I think one thing that we haven't touched on at all here, and maybe at the end, um, just as a thought, if you start looking at your principles as well, which is essentially, I like to call it, it's a universal law because it's a, 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 a way in which you can govern the, the, the consequences of those behaviors. Then you're sitting in a position where it's like, oh, I've got a framework because if you're very clear on those values, you understand why you're built in the way that you're built, why you're doing what you're doing. And if you have created your own framework through the principles that you wish to facilitate the framework of your life, now you've got, now you've got a foundation that you are in complete control over. And ideally, if you are in alignment, that word congruency is going to tie in because that that's what you did. It didn't come from someone outside of you. No one spoke it into your life. No one spoke it onto you. You decided, you related, and you are the one that set the priorities of all the above. So now just go and live it. Yeah. Sound good. Yeah, but guys, what a way to finish. That was golden. <laughs> Any parting words, boys? or questions you'd like the people listening to this to consider, to mull over, to even ask themselves or something that they can action, you know, in relation to maybe finding their own values or their vision. I have one. Like if you do have a passion and you do have a purpose, there'll be, there's a whole thing about that, that you like, but actually within it, that's the one piece that you actually really adore about it. And you can find that piece. Once you find that, you can actually find that in the other things that you do. And you can, rather than going, okay, I, I love skiing, so I'm going to be a ski instructor. What is it that you actually love about skiing? Is it the flow? Is it the freedom? What is that? What else gives you that aspect? You can apply that and go make a career out of it. Find a career that gives you that. Something that's going to give you money now, next week, month, and take that. It's a really, really good way to use your, your passion to then go, okay, cool. What do I actually love about this thing? 
how could I utilize that in a job role, in a career, or in a business? That I find super helpful. Yeah. So essentially what you're saying is look at the thing that you're doing and the feeling that you have fallen in love with from that thing. Yes. And recreate the feeling in other areas of your life. And that's how you find certainty and uncertainty, right? You've got the core thing that you need and then the variety for the different areas of life. 100%. Exactly. So well done. Exactly. Nailed it. Well, gents, thank you very much. We'll wrap it up here. Guys, if you loved this version of our podcast, episode two, then please you know, drop a comment. Let us know what you think of it. Share it and follow us for future episodes, all that good stuff. And we will see you in the next podcast. Thank you for listening.